morning. It's Monday the 11th of April 2022. I'm starting today's walk in Baslow because I'm going to be doing a little bit more of exploring the countryside around Chatsworth House. Crossing a bridge spanning Bar Brook, I turned right along a track, signposted to Chatsworth. Well, Chatsworth House is down that way. But I think for now, I'm going to do a walk which takes me up there and I'll descend to the house towards the end of the walk. I headed east across the open park, going straight over a couple of tracks, then over a fence to pass Jubilee Rock. This is Jubilee Rock. A halfway point up this little climb I'm doing. Over there, see Garden's Edge. That's a, a walk for another time. And on that side, can see over towards Baslow Edge. Done that a long time ago. Yeah. Continuing on, the ground rose towards the high terrain of Dob Edge. Reaching a wall by a stile, I turned sharply right to continue climbing. Before long, the ground's levelled out above Dob Edge. So that's the hardest part of the walk done now, the climbing. Got the climbing out of the way, so mainly it's going to be a level walk now, until I drop down to Chatsworth House later on. Crossing the stile, I entered Stand Wood, where I joined a broad forest track. After a short distance, I bore right along the path to look at something quite amazing. The most impressive survival at Chatsworth from the days of Bess of Hardwick is the Hunting Tower, built in the 1570s. This high prospect tower is sited on the crest of the hill, ideally placed to provide extensive views of the deer park, both for locating deer, observing the hunting, as well as being a place for banquets. Guests would have enjoyed the contrasting views to the west with its tamed landscape including the house and formal gardens below, and fields beyond. Isn't the hunting tower a fab place? Apparently, it can be used as a holiday let. God, imagine stopping there for a week. 
Looking over these views, fantastic. That's a pretty impressive view, isn't it, from the hunting tower? Yeah. Wow. What a great place to stay. Okay, well, I could go back down to Chatsworth House from here, but uh, it's a very steep descent from here, some very steep steps. There's more to see in Stan Wood, so I'm going to carry on walking through the wood and see Chatsworth House later on. Rejoining the broad track for a while, I went left to reach Emperor Lake, created in 1844 to supply water for the Emperor Fountain. Lovely. I've said this before, but I just find standing beside water very restful. Emperor Lake. <laughs> okay, here's a thought. How many people who watch my videos actually watch them right to the end? I mean, do you actually watch the end credits? I'm guessing a lot of people probably don't. I'm sure once the film fades to black and then the first credit appears, people probably just switch off then. I mean, that's fine. I mean, you're not compelled to watch every single second of my videos. But uh, from my point of view, it's a bit of a shame because obviously that's part of the film and I've usually got a piece of my music at the end credits as well. But another reason I really ask is because when people leave comments on my channel, they might actually ask me a question that is answered in the end credit. For example, when did you film this? <laughs> it's in the end credits. And it's also in the description below the video. But you may also have noticed that if you'd watched the last couple of videos I've made, I've actually cut down on the end credits. I mean, partly that's because I do feel that people probably don't watch all the end credits. Um, and also I'm just trying to cut down on the work for myself, really. Because all the credits that I give, I'll still put in the description below the video. But I've, as I mentioned before, as of course most people now can watch YouTube on their tellies, you won't see the description below the video. So the only way you can do that is to actually use your computer and you know, watch YouTube on your browser, and then you can read the description that way. So yeah, it's really nice to get comments on my YouTube channel. I'm sure my fellow YouTubers feel the same. It's always nice when people leave lovely feedback. And from my point of view, um, I've built up a friendship with these people. A lot of these people have sort of been following my channel now for some years, and I just feel I know them. Some of them I've met now, which is great, and I hope to meet more of them. Um, but I just feel I've got a load of friends out there, which is lovely, even though I haven't met most of them. It's just nice to sort of, there's a lot of people I will now consider friends, which is really nice. Swiss Lake. The only thing, there ain't no water in it. <laughs> there ain't none, it's all gone. <laughs> uh, oh well, it's still pretty here. <laughs> yeah. Beyond Swiss Lake, I carried on along the track through Standwood, which was now starting to curve around in a clockwise direction. This is a fault of mine now, and I'll hold my hands up to this. I don't take criticism very well. I do take criticism very personally. Um, and that is a fault on my part. I accept that. I wish I had a thicker skin. You know, sometimes I wish I could just sit back and think, oh well, not everybody's gonna like what I do. Um, thankfully, most people leave me lovely comments, which is great, as I say. 
but you always get the odd one. You know, thankfully it is just the odd few. But even then, I still take their criticism personally, and I wish I didn't. <laughs> I remember getting a comment last year on one of my videos um, from this lady and she said, great video, but... And then she went into great detail about what I'd got wrong <laughs> or what she found fault with it. And I thought, oh, flipping heck, you know. And I found that hard. I did find that hard. It would have been so bad if she'd sort of said, liked your video, and then sort of said a bit more positive stuff about my video and then perhaps said, well, this bit is wrong, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, it was just like, great video, but... And then a whole spiel of what she thought I got wrong. So, that was hard. But there you go, you've got to sort of take the rough with the smooth. Just say, I wish I had a thicker skin. And, uh, yeah, that's just, that's just YouTube for you, unfortunately. Just got to learn to live with these odd comments. But as I say, thankfully, they are in the minority. I mean, I'll admit that, you know, bearing in mind that I am doing all the work in my filmmaking, when I'm doing the research, um, there are things that I'm going to get wrong. I accept that. I'm not going to get everything right. But again, in the description below each video, I've put a disclaimer to try and cover myself there. Because as I say, it doesn't matter how much effort I put into my filmmaking, there are going to be times when I get things wrong. But there you go. <laughs> So just one final point on comments on my YouTube channel. As I say, you know, most people are lovely and I get a lot of lovely comments, but to the odd few that always have to leave something which is just, you know, I don't know, just can be quite cruel sometimes people. I've had some really cutting remarks in the past. My feeling is, okay, I accept that not everybody's gonna like what I do, that's fine, that's life. But I'm a firm believer that if you've nothing nice to say, then you shouldn't say it. So, if you find that you're watching one of my videos and you don't like what you see, that's fine. But don't leave a cutting comment about it. If you've got nothing nice to say about it, just don't say it. You can just switch off. Because at the end of the day, nobody forces you to watch my videos. There you go. <laughs> as the track eventually started heading northwards, I passed the rock known as Duke Seat from where I could get great views across the Derwent Valley around the Chatsworth Estate. Moving on from here, I eventually turned left off the track to begin dropping down to some spectacular sights. what I call impressive. This is the Souter Stone. I presume it's called Souter rather than Souter. But yeah, what a view. So right over the back of Chatsworth House from here. Lovely. Isn't that just absolutely fab? I'm quite warm now, I'm quite tempted to step underneath that and have a shower. <laughs> Below the south of stone, the zigzagging path descended steeply to the next interesting feature.
and this is the aqueduct. Just amazing. That's just lovely. I could quite happily stand here all day and just watch that waterfall. Very restful. Okay, well I think it's lunchtime now, and then I'll walk down to Chatsworth House. Heading towards the house, I walked into the stables, where there are some fine gift shops and great places to eat. Wings of Glory is one of 12 monumental sculptures displayed at different points around the estate's parkland. Radical Horizons, the act of Burning Man, will be running at Chatsworth this year, from April till October. Well, I'm not surprised it's busy here today. Of course, uh, I've got the day off today, but uh, of course, kids are off now for Easter. So, uh, for the next two weeks, so I'm not surprised it's busy because Chatsworth is lovely, it's always popular. Queen Mary's Bower was constructed in the 1570s when Mary Queen of Scots was held at Chatsworth in order to provide a raised exercise ground for the captive queen. past the entrance to the house and gardens, towards the river. Here I came across another of the monumental sculptures. This is known as the Fly Brewery. It was a very pleasant walk indeed. Another very pleasant walk. Well, I've just got to walk beside the river now, beside the River Derwent, and it's a nice low level walk back to Basler, not far at all. But before I finish, I'd like to give today's shout out to Russ and Wendy from Norfolk. Hi Russ and Wendy. <laughs> Hope you all keep him well. Russ has been in contact with me now. He's been a follower of my YouTube channel and uh, he's enjoyed my videos. And he loves the Peak District, and uh, he and Wendy are both coming to the Peak District next month, I believe, next in May. So yeah, next month. So hope you have a lovely time when you come to the Peak District, Russ and Wendy. Well, I know you will. 